Well, that's stupid because it does not work. So I'm very mindful that I want to give people practical, actionable, and effective solutions that are accessible to them. So that was the birth of the whole super gut concept because I, I learned that one that one microbe I started to replace first, lactobacillus rotari. And I saw, I don't think it's an exaggeration, Dan, let's say I saw lives transformed. Welcome to the Beauty Talk Podcast, where we feature how the best medical practitioners help their patients to look better, younger, and healthier. Now, enjoy the show, and here's your host. Daniel Gao here. I'm the host of Beauty Talk, where we feature the top medical practitioners in health and beauty, both inside and out. I have Dr. William Davis, who is a cardiologist and author of the number one New York Times bestselling Wheat Belly series of books, as well as Undoctored, and most recently, Supergut. He is also co-founder and chief medical officer of Realize Thera Therapeutics Corporation in Lake Bluff, Illinois, where he formulates unique products for health based on microbiome science. His most recent formulation is Oxyceutics Gut to Glow for Skin Health and Appearance. So Dr. Davis, welcome. Glad to have you here. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, so let's dive right into it. How did you first get started in medicine? Well, I used to practice interventional cardiology. That's the stuff where you open people's arteries and abort heart attacks and put stents in, drill off, drill through their arteries, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But you know, Dana, my mom died of sudden cardiac death Ooh. after her successful two-vessel coronary angioplasty in New Jersey, where I grew up. Well, it drove home to me that what I did, so ironically, my mom dies of the disease after the procedure that I was doing for patients. And so it drove home to me how silly, how useless, how in inadequate it was to manage a disease in a, in a hospital laboratory. So I started to think more about health. How do you take somebody and identify the potential for a heart attack or death, let's say a year, two years, five years, 10 years ahead of time? Of course, the prevailing conventional answer is measure cholesterol, which is an absolute waste of time. It's nonsense. There never was evidence for that. It's a lousy marker. It's almost useless. So what do you do? It says, hey, I'm 40. My dad died of a heart attack at age 53. Is that in store for me? Well, you can't judge that by cholesterol value. It's nonsense. So the only measure, this is 30 years ago now, Daniel, mm -hmm. but it remains true. Today, the only real test is a coronary calcium score. Measuring calcium in your coronary arteries as an indirect kind of dipstick for the total amount of atherosclerotic plaque. And I, back then, all we had was baby aspirin, statin cholesterol drugs to reduce cholesterol, exercise, a low-fat diet. Well, I help publish these data. If you just allow this, it goes up 25% per year. If you do all those things, aspirin, statin drug, low-fat diet, how fast does it go up? 25% per year has no impact whatsoever on that measure. Well, then I have people freaking out on me. This was in Milwaukee when I set Milwaukee Heart Scan many years ago. And so I had to devise a way to put a stop to it. It took some years and, and some uh, experimenting, and, and by, I finally did it. We started dropping people's heart scan scores, CT calcium scores, left and right. But it taught me a whole bunch of new lessons. For instance, wheat and grains and sugars are the, by far, the most heart disease causing foods in the modern diet. It also taught me about nutrients because you have to adjust, you have to correct for many nutrient deficiencies that have developed in modern people because the way we live, you have to drink your, your drink, you have to filter your drinking water. You have to, it's got sewage in it <laughs> if you drink from a river. And so you have to filter it, removes all magnesium. Got to supplement magnesium. Most of us live indoors, wear clothes when we're outside or live in a northern climate like I do and you don't get vitamin D. And so we placed all those nutrients, but it became clear there was something lacking. And I started digging for those answers a number of years ago, and it became clear it was in the microbiome. And so that's when I started to play around with all these issues in the microbiome and made some unexpected discoveries. Okay, wow, that's that's incredible story of how you got started. Now, I know that when it comes to your treatment and kind of what you do, a lot of it starts in the gut, like you have this gut treatment. So for people that aren't aware of it, what is gut treatment? So we have to accept that because of all the mistakes we've made societally, like the overuse of antibiotics. So most of us by age 40 have taken 30 courses of antibiotics, but other factors too. Glyphosate, the active ingredient in the Roundup, and Roundup the herbicide is, uh, yes, it's an herbicide, but it's also an antibiotic. Hmm. Uh, 
stomach acid blocking drugs, inflammatory drugs, food additives like food preservatives and emulsifying agents. These all impact the composition of the microbiome in the gastrointestinal tract dramatically. So we've introduced massive changes, including the loss of several hundred species that we're supposed to have, but no longer have. This is all unfolded, Daniel, really in the last 40 years or so. So we have uh, some of the older microbiologists who said, you know what? 40 years ago, we could recover these, this long list of microbes from stool, from breast milk, from urine, from skin. Now we can barely find them at all. That led me down this path of restoring one species in particular. And Daniel, probably by sheer dumb luck, I probably picked the most important, there's a lot of important microbes, but this one probably stands apart as being so powerful and most of us have lost, and that's Lactobacillus reuteri, R-E-U-T-E-R-I, named after the German microbiologist Gerhard Reuter. Well, restore this microbe, and in line with your interests, one of the things that happens is you lose your skin wrinkles, especially the fine wrinkles around the eyes, crow's feet, or smile lines. Longer term for deep wrinkles like forehead, nasal labial fold. Uh, but you also regain lost muscle. You know, we lose muscle as we age, it, it comes back. Your healing is faster. Your immune system is restored uh, similar to that of a, of a young person. Muscle returns, bone density is preserved, libido goes up. Males, older males experience about a 50% rise in testosterone. Older ladies, older ladies experience almost a universal loss of vaginal health. They, has, they develop vaginal atrophy, dryness, irritation, discharge. You can reverse that with this microbe. And so this microbe has so many far reaching effects and it boosts oxytocin release from your brain. So many people know that oxytocin is the hormone of love and empathy. Mm -hmm. So there's an increase in the intensity of love and affection for the people around you, but also generosity and the acceptance of other people's opinions. Isn't that cool? That's <laughs> crazy. I would have never thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> Just this one microbe, but I've been pursuing, you know, I have a lot of ladies in my audience and they say things like, oh, you know, well, that's very interesting, but we don't really care about muscle or healing or the immune response. We just want better skin. And I said, what? Really? Okay, fine. So I did a small human clinical trial in which we gave ladies, 25 ladies, uh, four things, lactobacillus reuteri at high counts, a collagen peptides, marine source collagen peptides, Hyaluronic acid, orally, of course, not topical, and <laughs> pardon me, and the carotenoid astaxanthin. And we asked them, please don't change your diet, please don't change your exercise program. And then we made measures such as high resolution skin ultrasound. And as you may know, if you take something like collagen or hyaluronic acid by itself, you get about a six to seven percent increase in dermal thickness from an increase in collagen over 90 days. We got 15%. So we had a dramatic uh, doubling or more of the increase in dermal thickness, dermal collagen. But another thing also happened. We measured their waist circumference just because it was free, right? <laughs> it was a skin study. Yeah. And uh, lo and behold, to my great surprise, completely unexpected, they lost a ton of fat in their waists, uh, up to eight and a half inches, wow. which, I, I, which I was shocked. Yeah. Uh, even more interesting, Daniel, they didn't lose much weight. Well, how can you lose up to eight and a half inches off your weight? These are big ladies and not lose weight. Well, presumptively, but consistent with the animal evidence, very good animal evidence, and my large anecdotal experience, and my personal experience, an increase in muscle. Now, we need to do that follow-on study where we do either a DEXA or some other measure to actually track the muscle increase, but we're seeing. So, increased muscle, loss of fat, abdominal fat, increased libido, loss of wrinkles, increased skin moisture, improved immune response, increased testosterone, restoration of that much. Daniel, I think what we've really stumbled on, and Daniel, by accident, mm -hmm. is a way to turn the clock back 10 or 20 years. Wow. It's almost like the fountain of youth that you stumbled upon. It sounds like too too good to believe, mm -hmm. but it's just, the, much of it is based on that microbe. I think it had we done only like collagen or mm -hmm. only hyaluronic, we would have seen nice effects. Mm -hmm. But what we've done is we've amplified the effects by adding back this, this microbe loss by nearly everybody.
Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. Now, with these types of what you're kind of talking about here, we're looking a little bit more at attacking the root causes or facing it at the root versus just treating the symptoms, which is what a lot of medical professionals may just look at. Oh, you have wrinkles, just do Botox or filler, or oh, you're overweight, let's take this pill, let's take this drug. But you're looking more at the root cause of it. So could you talk a little bit more about like kind of your your philosophy and how you look at it of let's look at the root cause versus treating the symptoms. You know, my experience has been, you get far better results, virtually no downside, if you focus on restoring things that humans were supposed to have all along. So you and I and your listeners were supposed to have lactobacillus reuteri because you got it by passage through your mom's birth canal <laughs> at birth or breastfeeding. But of course, your mom or you may have been exposed to antibiotics. That microbe is very susceptible to common antibiotics like amoxicillin. And so even though you took it maybe 20 years ago for an upper respiratory infection or whatever, you lost rotary. So we're going to replace it. Collagen and hyaluronic acid were supposed to be part of your diet in large quantities. And that's what your great grandma did. But since we were told, we we're given very, very silly advice. Cut your fat and cholesterol. That is awful, terrible advice. Never had good evidence in the first place. But uh, that caused most modern people to abandon the, the consumption of organ meats. Mm. So brain, heart, tongue, skin, all the things that modern people say, yuck, I'm not going to eat that. Those are sources of collagen and hyaluronic acid. The great thing about this, so I see ladies, of course, putting on their hyaluronic acid serum, which is fine, but they put it around their eyes. What did that do for their thigh skin or their abdominal skin or their neck? Nothing, of course. We take hyaluronic acid orally and it has body-wide skin effects mm. and it increases the production of collagen in your in the dermal layer of your skin and hyaluronic acid, despite being sourced from animals, is a fiber. You know, we think of fibers as coming from plants, right? Mm -hmm. Hyaluronic acid is a fiber that comes from animals, only none from plants. So if you don't eat animals, you get zero hyaluronic acid and this hyaluronic acid fiber is spectacular carefully effective on nourishing nourishing microbes in your GI tract. It causes a bloom in species such as Fecalobacterium, Fecalobacterium prasnitiae, Acromantia mucinophila, Lactospiration, Ruminic acacia. Don't remember that. Of course, those are species that in turn, fed by with hyaluronic acid, in turn produce a, an amino, um, a fatty acid called butyric acid or butyrate. And butyrate is spectacular for overall health, including loss of abdominal fat, reduction in blood sugar and blood pressure, and improving skin. Because this, that normal skin, as you know, is mildly acidic, a pH of about 4.5, neutral 7. Disease skin, by the way, acne, seborrhea, psoriasis, rosacea, all that, uh, those people have less acidic skin, typical pH about 5.5. The difference between 4.5 and 5.5 is tenfold, it's a logarithmic scale. Well, getting that hyaluronic acid, blooming those species that produce butyric acid that goes to your skin, acidifies the skin, mm. helps reduce redness, dryness, and helps you control or protect yourself from rashes. Mm. So uh, just that, and that's just hyaluronic acid. So what we're doing, and they, the astaxanthin that I added also, a carotenoid, it's it's the product of, of carotenoids. There's also lutein, beta carotene, uh, cryptoxanthin, a whole bunch of others. There's 600 of them. So we can't talk about all 600. So I chose astaxanthin kind of the prototype carotenoid because that also has wonderful effects on an anti-inflammatory effect, including in the skin and in joints and in the heart and everywhere else in your body and shrinks your waist by several centimeters by itself. Hmm. So uh, I put, we put these four things together. We get these spectacular youth restoring benefits that you can see on the face. You can see in the contours of your body and you can see in your waistline and uh, in the configuration of muscle. Because what we really, as you pointed out before, before we started recording, what we really want is not just better skin. We want better health and youthfulness that will be reflected on the skin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's really why I think it's trying to attack the, the root cause is really the, the most important thing in medicine. It's you fix the root cause, everything else will fall in line. But if you're just trying to fix the symptoms, you're just 
you're trying to to fight back a flood with uh with a with a garbage can <laughs> like it's you're not going to get anywhere now dr davis I, we talked a little bit kind of in introduction about your all the books that you've written your number one uh, new york times bestsellers so wheat belly i want to talk about that how did that first get started no dan so it goes back to when i tried to put a stop to those kerner calcium scores that were going up 25 percent pre you can imagine i had thousands of people freaking out on me Mm -hmm. Because my colleagues were telling them, oh, Danny, you feel fine, huh? You exercise, you ride your bike, you go for a jog, but you feel, but we're going to put you through a heart catheterization and see if you need bypass surgery or stent implantation, which, by the way, is wrong. It's unethical. It's actually malpractice, but it's done every day because it pays so well. I saw many people go through unnecessary procedures because they were terrified mm -hmm. and my colleagues didn't help. Daniel. You're a walking time bomb. I can't be responsible for your safety if you leave this office without a prescription for Lipitor or schedule for a procedure. This, they're very good at scaring the heck out of you. So what do you do? If it's you and me, we're just worried about our future, but we feel fine and the cholesterol values useless. So how do you put a stop to it? Well, one of the, the, one of the big drivers, not cholesterol, not LDL cholesterol, that's nonsense. That is the, a, a leftover from 1960s science. The American Heart Association even admits that, by the way. It's embarrassing. But the real drivers, there's many drivers. There's vitamin D deficiency. There's disruption of the microbiome in the GI tract. But among the top causes are lipoprotein particles. These are kind of what cholesterol is supposed to measure, but these are lipoproteins, fat-carrying proteins. The two drivers are VLDL, very low density lipoprotein, and small LDL. What foods cause those extravagantly potent causes of heart disease? Wheat grains and sugar, period. Not bacon, not butter, not olive oil, not pork, <laughs> wheat grains and sugar. This science is very clear cut. Even 30 years ago, Daniel, a lot of this science performed by Dr. Ron Krauss at UC uh, Berkeley and some other people at Hopkins and some of the Texas University performed all this science and it's been corroborated in 55 clinical trials. This is not something I made up. You hear nothing about it because there's no pot of gold for the pharmaceutical industry because you can control risk for heart disease purely, purely with diet, but not low fat, hard, healthy nonsense, uh, a diet that eliminates the foods that provoke formation of VLDL and small LDL. By the way, the reason why small LDL is such, such an extravagant cause for heart disease is because once you trigger its formation, let's say by consuming a bagel, you have it for five to seven days because the liver no longer recognizes that lipoprotein particle that doesn't clear it from your bloodstream. It's also very prone to oxidation, glycation. It's adherent to the arterial wall. L long list of reasons why those small LDL parts are the cause. Well, the only foods that cause that, those patterns, those abnormal patterns, VLDL and small LDL, wheat grains and sugars. So I, I asked people, hey, your heart scan score is a thousand or whatever, which is really high. Normal is zero. Let's let's just try this because it's clear that your 40 milligrams of Lipitor, your baby aspirin, low fat diet, exercise product, does nothing. So let's get rid of the wheat grains and sugar. They did it. And they come back and they say to me, hey, you didn't tell me I'd lose 57 pounds. You didn't tell me my skin rashes, depression, ulcerative colitis, rheumatoid arthritis, would go away. He didn't tell me that I'd become so lightheaded I had to stop all my three blood pressure medicines. So I, I stumbled for the purpose, then for the purpose of eradicating small LDL particles, I stumbled on. Now I asked myself, now wait a minute, how can this be? How can eliminating the thing advocated by all dietary authorities, right? Physicians, uh, dietitians, the USDA, the food pyramid, food plan, all that stuff. They all agree. You should cut your fat, saturated fat, eat more healthy whole grains, right? Everything in moderation. How can they all be wrong? But as time unfolded, and I dug into this talk to agricultural science, it became clear they had made a huge, a monumental blunder. And that doing the opposite, don't cut fat, never eat healthy whole grains, never eat sugar, of course, that too. And you have not only magnificent control over coronary risk and you put a stop to the otherwise relentless rise in your coronary calcium score you also shrunk your waist got rid of type 2 diabetes and hypertension and all kinds of other conditions and that was kind of the birth of the whole wheat belly story mm, got it wow that's that's quite a journey to go through there now i want to kind of skip over because i know you have another course you have a microbiome course as well which i'm sure is related to that as well but could you talk a little bit more about it what is microbiome and what is your course the microbiome course about you know daniel I, i'm 
I'm always mindful that I want to give people practical solutions. If I say the microbiome is all disrupted, it's screwing up your health, cause depression, and suicide, and hate, and diarrhea, and bloating, and you say, what should I do about it? And I say something dopey, like take a probiotic. Well, that's stupid, because it does not work. So I'm very mindful that I want to give people practical, actionable, and effective solutions that are accessible to them. So that was the birth of the whole super gut concept because I, I learned that one that one microbe I started to replace first, lactobacillus rotori. And I saw, I don't think it's an exaggeration, Daniel, let's say I saw lives transformed. Mm -hmm. I saw lives transformed. I saw bodies transformed, body shape and, and composition. I saw facial health transformed. You know, when I, so one of the uh, first ladies who volunteered to do this in a uh, informal clinical trial, uh, who started age 60, and she looked age 60, she had forehead wrinkles, nasolabia full, had fine crow's feet and smile lines, and had redness mm -hmm. around, I know I look kind of red in my, it's, it's a strange lighting in my room, but <laughs> I'm not really red. But, <laughs> uh, but she did this at age 60, three months later, 90 days later, with a combination of lactobacillus rotori, marine source collagen peptides, hyaluronic acid, and astaxanthin, all consumed orally with no change in diet. Not she'd get do better if she changed her diet, added vitamin D, et cetera. But this was just the four components. And she now looks more like she's 40, 45. Mm, wow. Lost her forehead wrinkles, lost her crow's feet, lost her smile lines. The nasal label fold is harder to reverse because it's much deeper, requires greater volume of collagen, mm -hmm. but it's, it's decreased in volume and all her redness disappeared. And she literally looks 10, if not 20 years younger. That's a very common experience, mm -hmm. but it's not from topical hyaluronic acid. I and mean, you can still do that, but it's not from that. It's not from, as you point out, fillers. Mm -hmm. It's not from red light. It's not from micro needling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's from doing this thing, as you point out, the inside out but specifically replacing factors that should have been part of your life all along. Mm, got it. So it's a more natural or really natural the way it should have been from the beginning, but because of how just things have gone, we've gotten rid of that, of, uh, of all those good stuff that was occurring in nature. And now we need to bring it back in. And, you know, we don't have to talk about side effects. Mm -hmm. You know, with drugs, of course, you have a long list of nasty side effects mm -hmm. from you know, yeah. liver uh, uh, damage to opportunistic infections to diarrhea, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, we uh, we have side benefits. So while you your skin looks younger and smoother and more moist mm -hmm. and you have more youthful musculature mm -hmm. and your libido is, is restored that you had in your 20s and your healing is faster and your immune response is improved and men's testosterone goes up and vaginal moisture returns and you like people better and you like your coworkers better and you have a reduction in social anxiety, anxiety in social situations. In other words, we don't have to talk. The only side effect, so any probiotic you take can cause gas and bloating. And that's because many people, by my estimation, easily, Daniel, easily one in two full microbes that have ascended into the small intestine. When you take a probiotic, that probiotic, uh, regardless of the type, starts to kill off the fecal microbes and you get bloating and death. people are like, oh, I can't tolerate. It. No, it means you have fecal microbes living in your, in the 24 feet of your small tent. Uh, this is a big issue, but very, it's something more of a complicated issue. But that's true of taking rotori or practically any other probiotic species. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, Dr. Davis, you've gone through a lot in kind of your whole journey, how you've gotten to this point. And I'm curious, because when people think about medicine, we think about treatment they what comes to mind is that there's a protocol that there's a this this whole process that people follow bucking the trend like everyone's saying oh this is the way you do it this is the way it's supposed to be done but you are looking kind of at what's the real reason people are sick what's a better solution so i'm sure there's a lot of creativity that that goes into that and even as you're going through and looking at the science of it uh is there any creativity within your approach to how you came up with these these treatments well, one of the, you know, I always, I try to ask, I hope, better questions. Mm -hmm. So this issue I, I just mentioned, that is the ascent of fecal microbes. These are microbes like E. coli and salmonella and campylobacter, which many people recognize as also the microbes of food poisoning. Mm. So you went to that fast food restaurant and the kid who's making your fries or hamburger uh, didn't wash his hands after moving his bowels and he contaminates your food with fecal material. It, it sounds terrible, but this happens all the time. 
and those are the same microbes. Well, those fecal microbes have been allowed to ascend. They're supposed to stay in your colon. Your colon is perfectly happy with fecal microbes. That's where they're supposed to be. But fecal microbes do not belong in the small intestine, whether it comes in through food poisoning or whether it ascends from your, from your colon. So when those fecal microbes start to colonize the small intestine, the 24 feet of small intestine, small intestine is not equipped to handle that. It's very unprotected compared to the colon. It has a thin single layer mucus barrier, unlike the two layer barrier of the colon. And the small intestine is very permeable. That's where you're supposed to absorb amino acids and vitamins and minerals. But when fecal microbes inhabit the small intestine, trillions of them, they live, you know, microbes only live for a few hours. They don't live very long. So trillions of microbes turning over rapidly in the 24 feet of small intestine. When they die, they release some of their toxic components. Specifically, the best study is endotoxin and it enters the bloodstream. And when that happens, it's called endotoxemia. And endotoxemia is how microbes originating in the small intestine can be experienced in the brain, for instance, as depression or hate or cognitive impairment or Parkinson's disease or on the skin as rosacea or psoriasis or seborrhea or an eczema or in the joints and muscle as fibromyalgia or rheumatoid arthritis or or in the car or in the heart as atrial fibrillation or coronary disease or congestive heart failure or worsening of congestive heart failure. In other words, we've got to reconsider all human disease. Well, this is the question I asked. Okay, if that's true in one to two, at least Americans, and by the way, I arrive at that number by asking this question. Let's look at all the studies that ask this question. In condition blank, what proportion of people will test positive for this problem? It's called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We say SIBO. What proportion test positive for SIBO? Let's put in uh, obese. In, in the 115 million obese Americans, what proportion test positive for SIBO? This is by using, measuring hydrogen gas and breath, by the way. 50%. Well, that's 55 or so million Americans right there. How about irritable bowel syndrome, right? Bloating, diarrhea, etc. cetera. Uh, of the 60 to 70 million Americans that have irritable bowel syndrome, what proportion test positive? Well, it varies from study to study, but I've averaged about 31%. That's another 18 to 20 million people right there. Well, let's throw in fatty liver, type 2 diabetes, pre-diabetes, neurodegenerative conditions, autoimmune conditions, restless leg syndrome, fibromyalgia. Uh, add all the numbers up. You easily exceed 100 million, more like 150 million people. I didn't believe it, Daniel. I did not believe it until a consumer device looks like this. Mm -hmm came out called the air. I have no relationship with the, with the device. I, I know the inventor, Dr. Angus Short, a PhD engineer from Dublin, Ireland. He invented it to help his wife because she had irritable bowel syndrome, was told to go on a low FODMAPS diet, low, low fiber sugar diet, but he saw how difficult it was for her. So he invents this device to detect hydrogen gas caused by microbes when they are exposed to fiber and sugar. Well, I called him up. I said, Angus, that's not quite what you invented. I said, this is a mapping device that tells you where microbes are living in the GI tract. So I had thousands of people now testing. You blow into it, registers on your smartphone, zero to 10. And lo and behold, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now you might say, well, maybe the technique, maybe the method, maybe the device is flawed. But what I saw is this, people who tested positive then took action to eradicate the small intestinal infestation with fecal microbes. And they said, my weight loss plateau finally broke. My hemoglobin A1C is now perfect. My rheumatoid arthritis is now completely gone. In other words, I saw improvement that accompanied the, the normalization of fecal microbes. But here, here, here's the crazy thing where your issue of creativity comes in, I think. So if, if I said, Daniel, okay, we, you, you tested positive for SIBO, you got 24 feet of fecal microbes. What if you just take a probiotic right off the shelf? Will it go away? No, you might get a reduction in bloating or diarrhea, but that's it. So what if we ask a better question? What if we ask, what if we chose species that colonize the small intestine? That's where the problem is, right? And produce bactericides. These are natural antibiotics produced by microbes effective in killing fecal microbes. <laughs> so I chose three, a strain of Lactobacillus rotori, my, our friend, a strain of Lactobacillus gasseri, also a small intestine colonizer, bacterium producer, and a spore forming microbe called bacillus coagulans that germinates in the small intestine and releases its, its own collection of bacteria. And Daniel, I, I just 
gave this tool to people. We make a yogurt. It's not really yogurt. It looks and smells like yogurt, but it's not yogurt. We, ex we ferment it for extended period, 36 hours to get really, really big counts. We did repeated measures of what's called flow cytometry on the yogurt to count the microbes. We get around 300 billion hmm. per half cup serving. So super duper big counts of microbes. We consume half cup a day. I expect it. I expect it. Oh, I feel a little better. No, what we got was 90% of all the people testing Paza on the air device converted to negative wow. over four weeks of consumption. Wow. So by the way, the best they have in conventional medicine, if your doctor even knows what it is, is Zyfaxin or Rifaximin, the antibiotic. And that has a success rate of about 55 to 60%. So wow. I was completely taken by surprise when we saw at least a 90% response rate. Now that was informal in about 50 people. We will do a formal clinical trial when I get the budget for it. These things cost money. I'm not pharma, uh, <laughs> but we'll do a formal trial. But it's, you know, Daniel, if, if the if the solution was something drastic, like take your small intestine out, well, we better be damn confident this is necessary. What if the solution is something that looks and smells like yogurt that you make in your kitchen? Mm -hmm. Well, you don't have to be quite so kind. And what we're really doing with what I call SIBO yogurt is restoring what are called keystone microbes, microbes you should have had all along anyway. So I think the bar is very low for doing this. In fact, I've been encouraging people to consume it chronically with at least some regularity, two, three times a week. It seems to prevent recurrence and it seems to prevent development of SIBO in the first place. So, but it came down, it came back just by asking some different questions. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I mean, that, I think you definitely hit it on the head as far as creativity and your approach to medicine and treatment coming up with it from a creative, uh, creative standpoint. Now, Dr. Davis, I'm sure that a lot you've had a lot of detractors or people that think, oh, no, this is not the right way to do it. So I'm really curious to see what is your uh, viewpoint kind of differentiating fads with actual science? It's a problem, isn't it, Daniel? Because there are a lot of people who say crazy things. It's responsible, for instance, for the proliferation of the ketogenic diet or the carnivorous diet, two, two, uh, two diets, two lifestyles with upfront benefits, long-term serious issues. And we're seeing it play out now because a lot of these people come to us and say, hey, I did the ketogenic diet and now I'm constipated. My triglycerides are 280, they went back up. I've regained abdominal fat. I've got all kinds of health from the diet. And so, uh, you know, I think you just have to find your trusted sources. Uh, that is people who you know did some real thinking, maybe did some uh, uh, clinical trials of their own, because there's too many people who have something to sell you and will tell you anything to sell it. So there's a lot of that going on. So it means taking everything, including what I say, <laughs> with a grain of salt, especially if there's if, if there's a product involved. Mm, got it. Now, Dr. Davis, I do have one uh, last question for you, but before I ask it, I do want to point people to your website at www.drdavis infinitehealth.com. Now, last question is, what do you think is the most important piece of advice you can give to someone who is suffering from multiple health issues and they don't know really what the cause is or they're trying different things and it's not working and they just, they're trying to find another solution. Where do they start? You know, I'll tell you, all the things we do for the microbiome are more effective when you do what I regard as basic efforts. Basic efforts in my mind are the diet, wheat, grain, and sugar elimination. People say, what's left? Lots of things are left. Eat avocados and eggs and bacon and eat pork and eat the fat, eat eat vegetables, eat root vegetables, lots and lots of real, so real whole foods, not the stuff that comes to you in cellophane wrapper, microwave, all that stuff, real food. Restore nutrients lost because of modern habits, vitamin D, magnesium, iodine, and omega-3 fatty acids. The primary source for omega-3 fatty acids, by the way, should be eating brain. People don't want to do that. We should get more by eating fish. We can't do that anymore. It's got mercury. Shellfish has cadmium, so we take fish oil capsules as the second best. Then we address the microbiome. The most important, for someone who doesn't really want to dive deep into the microbiome, the most important thing is fermented foods, just like grandma did. Sauerkraut, kefirs, I'd like to say eat yogurt, but not the yogurt from the store. Yogurt you make yourself with better microbes, prolonged fermentation, fermented veggies. This should be nearly no cost. You can chop up some cucumbers, put it in brine, uh, iodized, no iodized salt and no chlorinated water. So filtered water, not iodized salt. And then you let it sit in your kitchen counter for a few weeks and you've got fermented pickles. Mm. 
It's very easy to do. There's a little bit more to it than that, oversimplifying, but all the instructions are in my super gut book. There are many great resources, like my friend Donna Schwank, who operates a website called Cultured Foods for Life, and she's really good. She's not a scientist, she's just a mother and, and wife who loves to ferment things, but she's got she's really good at having recipes. So fermented foods. The curious thing, Daniel, about fermented foods is that microbes of fermented foods, like let's say kefir or sauerkraut, don't themselves take up residence in your GI tract. Mm -hmm. These are species like Leuconostoc mesenteroides or Pediococcus pentaceous. They don't take up residence in your GI tract. They just pass through and you poop them out. So what good are they? Well, interestingly, in their passage from mouth to toilet, they produce metabolites and they feed the beneficial microbes. Those are the microbes I mentioned earlier also bloom with hyaluronic acid, Fecalobacterium, Acromancia, Lactose, those butyrate producing species. So you, you consume the fermented food, the microbes are, are passed out, but in the passage they nourish or fertilize all those wonderful, causes diversity at bloom and all the beneficial microbes that nourish your bowels, your, your intestinal lining, and produce metabolites that achieve effects like shrinking your waist reducing abdominal fat, reducing blood pressure, reducing blood sugar, reducing insulin resistance, giving you better sleep, giving you more vivid dreams, increasing libido, and giving you smoother skin. <laughs> wow, well, I mean, I think that's that's sums everything up. I mean, thank you so much, Dr. Dave, for, sh for sharing your expertise. Uh, well, thank you, Dan. Thank you, uh, Daniel. Yeah, I think it's, it's so helpful to people that just don't know what other options are out there, especially like if they're suffering from all these um, all these health issues and they just don't know what the cause and they want to find the cause. They just don't know what it is. So thank you very much for sharing that. Now, Dr. Davis, where can people contact you or learn more about um, your programs and what you have to offer? So as you pointed out, my umbrella website is the awkwardly named, I know, drdavisinfinitehealth.com where there's several thousand blog articles. Uh, there's a very busy, I have a membership wall in part in front of part of it. Uh, but behind the wall is a forum, discussion forum with something like 200,000 posts. We do a weekly two-way Zoom, so typically about 90 to 100 people. And we talk about these kinds of things. I'm having trouble making the yogurt, I, all that kind of stuff. What's the best hyaluronic acid? All the kind of common questions we talk about. Uh, of course, there's a super gut book that has most of the recipes and the concepts that we, you and I've been talking about. Though uh, the more updated concepts like the shift in body composition, that's a new thing we just discovered literally a few months ago. So there's some new things. So that's why it, it, if you want to keep abreast, you join my conversations like in my drdavesinfinitehealth.com. Got it. Okay. Well, Dr. Davis, thanks for being on the show and sharing thanks, your message. Thanks for listening to the Beauty Talk podcast. Any questions, please contact the practice directly with the contact information provided during the show. We'll see you again next time. Bye for now.